I'm going to talk about the Le Taxifoot, um, a famous French viewer of the early 20th century. Before I start, I'd like to tell you something about the pictures that I'm going to show. Um, if not otherwise stated, all pictures uh, show pieces of my personal collection, but I'm also thankful that Sébastien Lemagnon from antiquephoto.com, I don't know if you know that site, um, provided me with some photos, as well as Thomas Asch, who is here today, and uh, Paul, Paul, I don't know how your surname is pronounced, really. Um, is it Burford? Okay, yes, thank you. Um, so there are three different um, additional picture sources in my presentation. All right. Um, Jules Richard took over his father's precision instrument company in the late 19th century and patented a stereo camera called the Veraskop in 1893. The name is derived from the antique goddess of truth, Veritas, and the Greek word skopos, which means watcher. The camera itself was also a high precision instrument. It was entirely made of metal to prevent humidity, uh, humidity and uh, temperature from affecting its operation. But most important, it used a new image format, 45 by 107, which was much smaller than the two common stereo formats of that time. And so was the camera too. In addition to handheld viewers, Richard also manufactured revolving stereoscope for glass slides in the new format. The revolving stereoscope had one large drawback. Changing the slides is extremely annoying and so you would only have access to a limited selection of your photos in the end. But in 1899, Richard and his technician Louis Collardot patented a new system that allowed the use of Bakelite -like magazines containing 25 slides each. You can see that in the lower left of the presentation. The dimensions of that stereoscope were about the same as the common tabletop viewers, but instead of 50 views, it could hold up to 300 views in the drawers underneath the me mechanism. They simply called it stereo cluster, which means stereo cabinet. And it was offered in the catalog in 1900 unspectacularly besides the various revolving stereoscopes. But this would surely change soon after. The viewer was renamed to Taxifoot one or two years later, but without any changes of the mechanism. From then on, there would be an update or extension of the Taxifoot family every year, widely promoted through advertisements, as you can see on the right. If you thought that the taxi foot has anything to do with a vehicle, you are wrong. The name is again derived from ancient Greek. The first part comes from taxis, which means arrangement or ordering, and the second from phos, which means light. In fact, this is quite close to the former name stereo cluster. Now I think it's time to take a closer look. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, in most cases, the standard taxi foot, later called taxi foot foyer moyen, long focus, consists of a storage base and an upper part housing the mechanism, just like the stereo classeur before. After placing the magazine on a carrier, a lever on the right, you can see it here. Um, operates two metal arms below the carrier that push the individual slides to the ocular level for viewing. When the, slides, when the slide is brought back into the magazine, the carrier is moved backwards so that the metal arms access the next slide. This horizontal movement is connected to a counter on the left side of the taxi foot. 
And if you hold down the main operating lever, you can turn the knob on the counter freely and navigate directly to a specific slide in the magazine. The new Veroscope slides all had some blank space in between the two single images. This area was commonly used to record information about the stereo photo, like place and date. Another lever on the left of the taxi foot, you can see that here on the right picture, um, tilts down an additional lens and mirror system that enables viewing that space where the date or place is written with your right eye, as you can see here. Finally, like all the better stereo viewers, the taxi foot also had adjustable focus. In addition to viewing photos, a 192 advertisement already tells us about a lantern attachment that could be used for projection over distances up to four meters, but only monoscopic, not stereoscopic projection yet. In 93, an employee of the Richard company wrote to a photography, photography reseller that the taxifold would also be available for the six by 13 and 8.5 by 17 formats. And one year later, Richard introduced yet another new format upon suggestion of the members of the Stereo Club Francais. And this 7 by 13 format was said to be the most rational stereo format for several, several reasons. These four formats listed here were continuously produced even though the storage space in the base varied. In most catalogs, the names are as I've uh, written them here on this uh, presentation. Taxi Ford Foyer Moyen for the small format, Taxi Ford Numero 1 for 7x13, uh, Taxi Ford Numero 1B for 6x13 slides, and Taxi Ford Numero 2 for the large format. Also in 1904, Richard patented a new feature for all models. From now on, the two oculars were placed on two wooden plates that allowed interocular adjustment to suit the eye spacing of the individual person in front of the viewer. You can see that uh, wooden plates uh, on the right uh, viewer here. It goes without saying that the distance between the lenses and the slide inside the viewer has to be at least the width of a magazine, which is almost 10 centimeters. This is no problem for the larger formats, but when viewing Vervascope slides, it feels just like you were standing in a large dark room with a small window in the wall because large areas of your field of vision are actually just black space. This seems to have bothered Richard several, several years. In my personal opinion, this was possibly the most challenging task in the development of the taxi foot. It would take five patented attempts, finally resulting in two different solutions to handle that problem. In 95, two patents show mechanisms that carried the individual slide both vertically from the magazine to the ocular level and afterwards also horizontally towards the lenses, as you can see here. The catalog proves that this so-called model mécanique was sold in 99, but it is rarely seen. Probably the mechanism was not perfect yet. This would take a few more years. The more commonly used method was the so-called model optique, which took a completely different approach to the same problem. Instead of a horizontal movement, it used additional block lenses to magnify the photo. These lenses could be either permanently lowered in front of the oculars or manually by another lever on the left, as you can see here on the left picture. Using lenses for that purpose leads to some distortion at the edges of the image, but overall, the viewing experience is quite satisfying. 
But on the other hand, the stereo photo was cropped. Not much, but sometimes you were going to miss details in the corners. You can see the magnifying process here. And as you can see on the lower part, there um, is some black uh, cropped area. Starting at 250 francs, the average price for a taxifort would be around 300 francs. In 98, Richard introduced a new version only for the Veraskop format, so for the small format, at a price of only 148 francs. The so-called model simplifié, simplified model, had a crank-operated mechanism instead of a lever and it is indeed very comfortable to use. There was still a counter on the left with another extremely clever improvement. While you need to hold down the lever of the other taxifort models to freely navigate through the inserted magazine, now you just needed to push the knob before turning. A 6x13 version appeared in about 1926 and in 1931, uh, the wooden body was enlarged for a more comfortable viewing height, height and a storage base was added. The crank operating system was probably the key for the further development of the model mechanic. Meanwhile, an electric lamp was, um, a, a lamp attachment was patented in 199 and the wooden ocular plates were replaced um, by adjustable eyepieces entirely made of metal, patented in 1911. Uh, so this is these eyepieces in wood or metal can help you to date your individual taxi foot if you have one. In 1911, there are two more patents on the model mechanique. It seems to me that this new mechanism was introduced not, uh, not in that year, but another two years later in 1930, 13, because the price then suddenly jumped while the prices for the other models remained the same. And indeed, the higher price is worth it. The uh, mechanism is now driven by a crank, just like the model Simplifié. One turn to lift the slide, seen here in the middle, and another turn to move it towards the oculars, seen on the right picture. No cropping of the images, no distortion. The view viewing experience is fantastic. In my opinion, this is really the best taxi food ever produced, and I'm very happy to have one. You can see uh, the magnifying view again here on the lower right. Because of the uh, success of color photography achieved with autochrome slides mainly, many manufacturers like Gaumont, Plock or MD offered special magazines to handle autochrome slides in France. This was necessary because autochromes were developed as direct positives and there was no possibility for inverting the left and the right images, except by cutting the glass and switching the positions. Therefore, a second glass was typically added later for stabilization and protection also, because autochromes were extremely prone to humidity. So the autochrome slides finally were twice as thick as normal slides. This is the reason why different magazines were requ required. But Richard went a more sophisticated way. Instead of cutting the autochrome slides, he recommended turning the slides just upside down because this switches the left and the right images as well. And then attaching prisms on the oculars to invert the image upside down. These so-called retresseurs became available in 1913 as well. And this leads to the last edition for the taxi foot model mechanique, a quick exchange me mechanism for the entire IPs assembly together with two additional sets in a high quality leather case. 
one set for autochrome lenses, as I showed before, and one set to change the long focus back to the short focus model. model. So for whatever reason that should be. So I'm on, there are a few more developments that I will skip due to the time, but um, I want to uh, talk about two other things, um, which are luxury versions and furniture. To arouse interest, there were also specially designed deluxe versions of the taxi foot that were not always available according to catalogs. One year, one version was available, next year another version. You can see three really beautiful ones here. And for those who had larger photo collections, there were storage cabinets, especially designed for the taxi foot and produced by Richard as well. But you could also um, buy just the drawers and incorporate them into other pieces of furniture to suit your purpose. Maybe you already had a shelf and then you could just buy uh, original drawers for the magazines. So I'm at the end of my presentation. The Veroscope and the Taxifoda, I would say two halves of an unbelievable stereo development effort that went on for 40 years essentially without any general changes. The taxi food was exported to and patented in many countries, Switzerland, uh, Great Britain, in the US and so on. All this serves as an example of how attractive stereoscopy must have been at that time and also confirms the quality of the taxi foods as a technical device. We can only guess at the prestige of having a taxi foot at that time at your home. But what would better illustrate the meaning of the taxi foot to its owners than the autochrome stereo photo that Thomas Ash found in one of his devices. I think this is really, really a beautiful document of that time. Well, thank you for listening. I did not read any of the upcoming comments. I will do that later. I hope you've enjoyed it. As usually, I will publish an article on stereo site, and it's probably worth looking at it again because there will be a few more details that I could not cover in that 15 minutes here. Thank you. There's silent applause. <laughs> Great, thank you, Pascal. Yeah, I saw a note. Could you guys hear when I was sliding that laptop? Was that actually audible? Okay, all right. I thought I was on mute. I have, I have two laptops here, so I was just kind of adjusting the other one so I'm not staring at it and, okay, cool. Um, any questions for Pascal, feel free to come off mute. Uh, we've got five minutes for questions and then we will um, move on to Diego. Um, I have a question about the dating. Uh, so if we have a taxi foe with the wood, uh, the wooden uh, frame around the lenses, when they went to the metal, did they totally stop making the wood ones or was that a choice? I think they, um, I suppose they totally stopped because the metal ones um, are much better to uh, operate. Ah, so um, having one with wood definitely would put it into a certain date period. Yeah, before, okay. uh, before 1911. Um, luckily, um, I have a taxi phone with metal eyepieces that has a serial at around 8,000. And uh, Andre, um, who is uh, also here, has a one with a wooden um, ocular plates with a serial with a 7,000. So we can assume that uh, 
the change of the serials would be around uh, seven or eight thousand. Well, I'll, I'll I'll look at ours and I'll send you the serial numbers and to go with each one. Yeah. Are the serial numbers on the bottom plate inside uh, under where the the magazine goes? Yes, exactly. But um, it's difficult because there are actually no sources um, documenting the serial numbers in the years. No, but collectors compare numbers, you know, just for curiosity. So well, we can start. That may a help a bit. Pardon me. <laughs> we can start a database. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, it's a uh, the to me the amazing thing about Jules Richard is the uh, length of time period and the e extreme quality of everything that they made uh, up to their 35 millimeter Veriscope F40, which was made, you know, in the up through the early 1950s. Um, do you know if uh, people in in cities and towns? Uh, would know each other and bring over um, images to exchange with each other? Was there any kind of like sense of a, a group, group ownership kind of thing? I don't know, but um, actually it would have been possible at least because Richard also produced small handheld viewers. And so it would have been possible that you own a Veroscope camera but no large taxi phone. But probably the um, Bacchanid magazines were quite cheap. I think two francs, probably. And um, so you, you could store your, uh, your photos, watch them in your own handheld viewer. But if you went somewhere where a taxi phone was, you could easily bring your magazine with you. So might be possible, but I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> Because in the late 60s and early 70s, uh, we would take our albums around to each other's houses and you'd spend hours just going over things. And I was wondering if that was part of um, part of a activity <clears throat> with people with these devices. Pascal, maybe I missed it at the beginning, but did you show or could you show the guts of the the revolving one, you know, the before mechanism, before they develop the newer advance. Sorry, say that again. Do you did you did you show or can you show a graphic uh, of the the revolving style mechanism, the one that they had before they developed the more complicated advance? Um, no, I have not no picture of the mechanism actually, but there is an article I think about that um, before mechanism on Andre's uh, website. Uh, Andre, uh, could you insert the link probably? Yeah, we'll share it. Cool. Is it just a drum and they're all on the circumference of it? Like, like you know, they, they are on a belt, on a metal a belt. belt. Okay. Similar to like a Becker's viewer. But uh, Andre has an article actually on the Richard um, viewer that came before the stereo plasma. Share it in the, in the chat. Thank you so much, Pascal. Um, Can I ask one question, Akira? Yes. Uh, Pascal, did, did you find out uh, how many taxi phones were produced during the lifetime? Uh, no, I know of five digit uh, serial numbers, um, but I but I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. The the other thing to understand today is uh, I don't know what the price of a Veris of a taxi float at that time would be converted into you know let's say U.S. dollars or current currency, but I think it would be the equivalent of at least like two thousand or two thousand five hundred dollars. If I, I think I tried to calculate it at one point, and so it was a very expensive item. Uh, well, David, in the 20s, the price uh, was for the, I think I remember for the me mechanical model, it was like, like 1,400 francs already in the 20s. 
So this must have been really, really expensive and even much more expensive than uh, the camera. The Verasco was also said to be a very expensive camera, but it was also only half the price of a um, taxi foot with a storage cabinet underneath. Well, that, that's why they made the glyphoscope <laughs> cheap camera. <laughs> Okay, so um, thank you, Pascal.